That's right, folks. Tonight's show will be simply vaudeville. Now you may ask yourself, what exactly does this mean? What is vaudeville? Well, come on, kids. Let's tell them. Vaudeville is singing. And dancing. And magicians. It can be animal acts. Or acrobats. A juggler. Maybe a ventriloquist. Or a comedian. Someone can play an instrument. Or even just whistle. Just about every performer you can think of was a part of vaudeville. It was like a big variety show. And the entertainment would change each and every week. So there are thousands of people who toured all over the country, performing their acts on stages, just like this one. And now, we'll have to tell you more about that later. Right now, we're ready to start our Simply Vaudeville show. Are you ready? Are you ready, kids? Yeah! Then off with the show. comedy singing duos, but one of my favorites is the team of Elmer Lawrence and Jack Bourne. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. It's great to be here. Jack, I understand you two just got back from Hollywood where you created a short film of your vaudeville act for the Warner Brothers. Yes, indeed. It was called The Country Gentleman. It was quite an exciting time, wasn't it, Elmer? Elmer doesn't say much, does he? No, you'll have to excuse Elmer. He came back from the trip a little shell-shocked. Oh, really? What happened? Somebody hit him over the head with a sack of peanuts. How did you two meet? Well, we were working in a five and ten cent store, but Elmer got fired. Really? Why? Uh, he couldn't remember the prices. Um, Elmer does great impressions. That's great! What's his best impression? Milk. Milk? Yeah, show him, Elmer. What kind of milk is that? Cast your eyes. <laughs> I think it's time you do the song that you did in that movie. Sleepy time, gal. You're turning night into day. Sleepy time, gal. You danced the evening away. Silvery star fades out of sight. Please give me one little kiss, then let us whisper good night. It's getting late, and dear, your pillows wait. Time gal, when all your dancing is through. Evie time gal, I'll find a cottage for you. 
You'll learn to cook and to sew. What's more, you'll love it, I know. When you're a stay at home, play at home, eight o'clock, sleepy time gal. Vaudeville got its start in the 1880s. It sprang to life from variety shows and circus side shows. Right. Minstrel shows and burlesque. But as it started touring around the country, every act had to be suitable for the entire family. And vaudeville theaters started springing up like weeds in every size town imaginable. And by 1900, there were over 2,000 vaudeville houses in the United States. It was the leading form of entertainment for about the next 50 years. Oh, I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. A Yankee Doodle do or die. Oh, yes, that's me, George M. Cohen, that Yankee Doodle boy. Let me tell you about my days in vaudeville. I was born in 1878 on the 4th of July. I literally grew up on the stage. My family were traveling vaudevillians, and I joined them on stage in my mother's arms as an infant. As soon as I could walk and talk, I was taught how to sing and dance. Our vaudeville act was called the Four Cohans, those being my parents, my older sister Josie, and me. I began writing original skits and songs for my family when I was only 15 and sold my first songs to a national publisher. From vaudeville, it was a natural step to go on to Stalin, Broadway. I was 26 when I wrote and directed my first big Broadway musical hit known as Little Johnny Jones, starring, of course, the four Cohans. In the summer, we would take a vacation from the vaudeville circuit and travel to my grandmother's home in North Brookfield, Massachusetts. This would give me a chance to ride a bike and play baseball. I turned those happy memories into another Broadway musical in which I wrote one of my favorite songs. I'm going to sing it for you now. Are you ready? Here goes. G-A-N spells Harrigan. Proud of all the Irish blood that's in me. Divil a man can say a word again me. H-A-R-R-I G-A-N-U-C Is a name that a shame never has been connected with Harrigan. That's me. Thank you, thank you. My mother thanks you, my father thanks you, my sister thanks you, and I thank you.
You know, I went to the market yesterday to buy everything to make a fruit salad, and I just could not stop laughing. What was so funny? Well, I was thinking about my favorite fruit jokes. Tell me, I need to laugh too. Okay, what do you call an apple who plays the trumpet? What? Tutti Fruity. <laughs> Why did the orange go out with the prune? Why? Because he couldn't find a date. <laughs> okay, I got one. What do you give a hurt lemon? I don't know. <laughs> Lemonade. <laughs> How do you fix a broken pumpkin? I got it. A <laughs> pumpkin patch. What happens when you step on a grape? A little wide. <laughs> I've got one more for you. Why do melons have weddings? Why? Because they can't elope. <laughs> okay, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I'm with you. Let's introduce our next act. Here's Fanny Bryce. Like all vaudevillians, I've always wanted to entertain. I was born in I was born in Fanny Borak in 1981 in New York City and started seeing and started and started singing amateur acts when I was a kid. My younger brother Lou had already changed his last name to Bryce and was performing in vaudeville. So I did the, the, so I did the, the only sensible thing to do. I dropped out of school, changed my name to Fanny Bryce, and found a job singing, singing in a, in a burlesque show. I was 19 years old. I was 19 years old, and who of all people but the famous Florence Ziegfeld came to see me. He was casting the 1910 edition of the Ziegfeld Follies and asked me to be in the show. And the rest, as they say, is history. He was and the rest, as they say, is history. He was lucky. I was lucky enough to get two very funny songs that brought down the house. I went on to star in six more of Mr. Ziegfeld's lavish productions. When I wasn't doing the Follies, I was always busy in vaudeville. I knew I had the goods spread over with a torchy ballad or a knock him in the eye with a comic song. They even wrote a hit musical about my life called Funny Girl and is packing them in again on Broadway right now. Tonight I'm going to sing one of my most famous songs. I sang in Mr. Ziegfeld's 1921 Follies. After hearing me sing on opening night, one critic said, and I quote, with her highly developed comic sense, Miss Bryce has no peer on stage. How about them apples? I'll do it for you now. Father has a business, strictly second hand. Everything from toothpicks to a baby grand. Stuff in our apartment came from father's store. Even things I'm wearing, someone wore before. It's no wonder that I feel abused. I never get a thing that ain't been used. I'm wearing second-hand hats, second-hand clothes. That's why they call me second-hand rose. Even our piano in the parlor. Daddy bought for ten cents on the dollar. Second-hand curls, I'm wearing second-hand pearls. I never get a single thing that's new. Even Jake the plumber, he's the man I adore. He had the nerve to tell me he's been married before. Everyone knows that I'm just second-hand rose from Second Avenue. Last week, I went to my doctor, and I said, Doctor, there's a ringing in my ears. And he said to me, well, don't answer. <laughs> my doctor gave another man six months to live. The man said he couldn't pay, so the doctor gave him another six more months to live. <laughs> the doctor called Mrs. Jones, and Mrs. Jones said, and he said to her, 
Your check came back. She said, well, so did my arthritis. <laughs> the doctor told another man that he'd live to be 60. He looked at him and said, well, doc, I am 60. The doctor said, see, what I tell you? And now pre prepare to be astounded by our next act. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Putting on the Ritz. Different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes and cutaway coats, perfect fits. Putting on the Ritz. Dressed up like a million dollar trooper. Trying hard to look like Gary Cooper. Super duper. Come, let's mix. We're Rockefellers. Walk with sticks or umbrellas in their mitts. Putting on the Ritz. Putting on the Ritz. Putting on the Ritz. Putting on the Ritz. Good evening. My name is Princess Zarini. Transferring thought across the universe is an ancient art from the far reaches of the Asian continent. To demonstrate this phenomenon tonight, I have with me the one and only Professor Marvel. <laughs> Professor, please sit here and let me blindfold you so you cannot see what I will be doing. audience and ask an individual at random to help me out. I will take a picture of these objects and send it to Professor Marvel through thought transfer. <laughs> you guys, I need to have something to <laughs>
People ask me, what was it like being a vaudeville performer? And I often tell them, it wasn't easy. You got that right. Every performer had to write or buy their own materials. Buying their own makeup, costumes, and props. They also had to pay, from, pay for their own fare from town to town, and that was usually by train. And usually a new town and a new theater every week. They paid their own hotel expenses, often in boarding houses. And not to mention the fact that the most respectable hotels wouldn't allow the actors to stay there. But everybody wanted a shot at the big time because name, big name headliners could make as much as $3,500 a week. That's about $50,000 a week today. Not too shabby if you ask me. I agree. And now presenting our next vaudeville act. They met at a vaudeville theater in New Jersey in 1923, and it was love at first sight. George Burns and Gracie Allen became one of the most beloved couples in show business and continued entertaining audiences for the next 40 years on stage, radio, movies, and television. When they started out, George told the jokes, and Gracie played the role of straight man. But Gracie was getting all the laughs, so they decided to switch roles. George started smoking the cigars and was listening to Gracie's scattered brain stories, and the rest they say is history. Here's George and Gracie. Gracie, what do you want to talk about? I don't care, but whatever it is, let's talk about what we're packing. Packing? Why? Where are we going? I don't know that either, but it's going to be a long trip. Who told you that? Madame Sonia at the Gypsy Tea Room. Well, I'll pack my violin and go with you. Madame Sonia, eh? Oh, she's wonderful, George. The minute she looked and seen my teacup, she knew all about me. She said that I had a castle in Spain, I was an opera singer, and I was married to an Italian count. Oh, nice guess. George, don't rush me. I'm still young. Well, well, what else? She showed me three tea leaves sitting together in the corner of my cup and said they were my three children. But Gracie, we only have two, Sandra and Ronnie. I know, but she was so nice. I just didn't have the heart to tell her, but everything worked out just fine. Oh, it did? Yeah, I asked her if she had any children, but she said no. She loved them, but she wasn't married. So? So when it was time to go, I took, I took the extra child out of my cup and gave it to her. This Madame Sonia sounds very interesting. Oh, yes, and the things they ask her. There was this one lady today at the next table, and she wanted to know if her husband still loves her. Well, why didn't she ask her husband? Oh, she couldn't. He left her 20 years ago, and she doesn't know where to find him. Well, does Madame Sonia work with a crystal ball or something? She used to, but she has to give it up because of her adenoids. What do her adenoids have to do with the crystal ball? You see, she breathes for 
her nose. And when she looked at the crystal ball, she fogged up everybody's future. Gracie, I have a question for you. Why did you go there? Well, I wanted to get the answer to a question which has been bothering me for years. What's the question? Well, everybody I talk to says, Gracie, where are your marbles? And I like to be able to tell them. Say goodnight, Gracie. Good night. <laughs> From coast to coast, from Canada to Mexico, they're doing a new dance, a try dance, a true dance, and you'll sweep the land. And you'll think it's so grand, you'll have to learn how to do it. So please don't go away, because we got this little dance that's gonna rise to fame. It should have put most any other dance to shame. The turkey trot, the bunny hop, the tickling toes will be forgotten when we start to go. Mr. Leader, won't you start the syncopation? And we'll begin a little demonstration. Now, first you put your two feet close up tight, then you swing to the left, and you swing to the right. Step around the noise, tight and nice and tight. Then you twist around and twist around with all your might. Stretch your loving arms, lay out in space. Then you do the eagle rock with a style and grace. Bring your foot way round and bring it back. Now that's what I call bum the jack. And now presenting Mysterious G. And his disappearing bunnies. Mysterious D, and today I will be making a, my, my assistant bunny disappear. May I present Miss Bunny to the stage? <laughs> Miss Bunny, will you please get inside the box? <laughs> now I'll make her disappear with the magic wood. Hocus Pocus! Pocus, pocus. Wait, what? Oh. Uh, hocus, pocus. Uh -oh. Wait, what? Uh, hocus, pocus. Oh no! Where did my bunny go? My mom's gonna be so mad. Her mom's gonna be so mad. I'm gonna be grounded for life. Oh, thank goodness, you're there. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Oh. I'm never going back again. Pocus, pocus. Oh. 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 Born Isidore Iskowitz in 1892 in a ghetto neighborhood on the Lower East Side of New York City. I was raised in a small basement apartment by my grandmother, Esther Kanterwitz. When she signed me up for school, she gave me her last name, 
but the person in charge decided it needed to be shortened, so it became Eddie Cantor. We were so poor, I had to drop out of school in fifth grade and started working odd jobs performing in the streets for change. I found out I really liked singing and being funny, and there, and there it was on Travaudville. My performance caught the attention of that famous theater producer, Florence Ziegfeld, and I guess he liked what he saw because at the age of 25, uh, I became the star of his 1917 Ziegfeld Follies on Broadway. In 19, I started, er, in 1923, I started a tour, which was a huge success, and I, uh, in 1926, I moved to Hollywood and started in, in, in movies. It's been a great life. And that, before I go, I want to sing you one of my most successful songs, and it was a big hit recording back in the 1920s, and I also get to sing it in the movie, The Great Ziegfeld. Here goes. If you knew Susie like I know Susie, oh, 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 what a gal. There's none so classy as this fair lassie. Oh, oh, holy Moses, what a chassis we went right. She didn't bark back from Yonkers. I'm the one who had to walk. If you knew Susie like I know Susie, oh, oh what a girl. Working for a living is so difficult. Don't I know it. You know, I once was a banker. Oh, really? What happened? I lost interest. <laughs> An accountant got fired at the bank where I work. Oh, really? What happened? He dropped a brownie on his paperwork. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah, the boss accused him of fudging the numbers. <laughs> Accountants are so misunderstood. Really? Yes, only a fraction of the people get them. <laughs> I know another guy who got fired from his job at the calendar making factory. What happened? He took a day off. <laughs> I used to work at the can crushing factory. Oh really? What happened? The work was so depressing. <laughs> Do you know which state has the best tiny beverage business? I bet it's mini soda. <laughs> And then there was the road worker's boss who fired him for stealing. How did he find out? Well, all the signs were there. And I know a donut maker who had to quit her job. What a shame. Yeah, she began to dislike the whole business. You know, I really admired our office for going paperless. Then I went to the restroom. <laughs> I think it's time to go now.
form of entertainment that achieved popularity in vaudeville was the act of throwing your voice into a puppet. Probably the most famous was Edgar Bergen and his puppet, Charlie McCarthy. They went from vaudeville to radio to movies, and they were always the top draw, even though Charlie kept making fun of Bergen because you could see his lips moving. Here tonight, we have our very own ventriloquist team of Harriet and her puppet. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My friend Henry and I are excited to be playing the historic Snoot Theater. Hello, folks. Just look at that audience. Yeah, look at them. It sort of want to make you give up show business, doesn't it? Why, Henry, what an awful thing to say. I'm sorry, but I just can't seem to help myself. And why is that? Someone keeps on putting words in my mouth. Well, I hope you're having a good time here. Whatever you say, you know it's all up to you. I don't need you, you know. I could be funny without a puppet. Really? You're not even funny with a puppet. <laughs> you think you're so funny? Go ahead. You tell the jokes. All right. A ritualist walked into a table. What happened? The table said, ouch. That was terrible. It got a laugh, didn't it? By the way, did you hear about the schizophrenic ventriloquist? No, I didn't. Everyone around him heard voices. Do you have any more? Sure. Do you know what happened to the frog's car once it broke down? What happened? It got towed away. That was really awful. Did you know my uncle was also a ventriloquist puppet? No, I didn't. It's sad. He died drinking furniture polish. Oh, that is sad. <laughs> it was a slow death, but he had a beautiful finish. <laughs> Henry, I think it's time we sing. Whatever you say. But you're always so far away, away. You're a nice little fellow, I know by your voice. But you're always so far away, away. So who would have thought by the 1930s that vaudeville was mainly out of business? I can tell you in one word, technology. Yeah, that's right. First it was the phonographic record. Why well, go to the theater to hear your favorite singer when you can bring her home and play her song as many times as you'd like? Then it was radio bringing in vaudeville singers to your house every night. And when movies began to talk in the 1920s, the actors flocked to be in the movies. And you could see your favorite actor up on your local big screen at your local theater. Then came the stock market crash in 1929, ushering in the Great Depression. Vaudeville kept going in larger cities. But it never fully recovered its days of glory.
Judy Garland. I bet most of you know me as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Oh, Auntie Em, there's no place like home. My real name is Frances Ethel Gum. Oh, isn't that just awful? My parents were vaudevillians back in the 1920s when I was born. I was the youngest of three sisters, and at just two years old, I made my debut by joining my sisters on stage at my father's movie theater in Grand Rapids, Michigan, during a Christmas show singing Jingle Bells. A couple of years later, we moved to California, where my mother was determined to get us into the movies. But for the next several years, we toured the vaudeville circuit as the Gum Sisters. The name was bad enough, but one theater actually built us as the Glum Sisters. Can you imagine? The announcer came over to us one night and told us we were prettier than a garland of flowers, but we had to change our name. That night, he introduced us for the first time as the Garland Sisters, and I changed my name to Judy. Anyways, in 1935, Louis B. Mayer, who was the head of MGM Studios, sent someone to hear our act in downtown Los Angeles. A couple of days later, I was asked to audition at the studio. I guess they liked that 13-year-old kid because they signed me to a long-term contract, and that's how I came to play Dorothy. So tonight, I'm going to sing for you the song of, from our vaudeville act that I sang at the audition. I hope you'll like it. It's called Zing, Want the Strings of My Heart. Dear, when you smiled at me, I heard a melody. It haunted me from the start. Something inside of me started a symphony. Zing, wet the strings of my heart. Twas like a breath of spring. I heard a robin sing about a nest set apart. All nature seemed to be in perfect harmony. Sing with the strings of my heart. from vacation and boy did I have a good time. What did you do? I sat by the river and went fishing. I got a big bunch of fish. I know how much to look at fishing. Can't figure out how to talk with a fish. I guess you just have to drop it a line. Did you know it also helps if you listen to music while you're fishing? What do you listen to? Oh, something really catchy. Did you know that fish are good musicians? Really? I didn't know that. Oh yes, they sure know their scales. And do you know where fish keep all their money? No. Where? In the riverbank. <laughs> that makes sense. What's the most valuable fish you can catch? A goldfish, of course. And what's the most famous fish you've ever caught? A starfish. Is it true that fish swim in schools? That's true, but they always get bad grades when they swim below sea level. Well, <laughs> sure. I, I have one for you. Do you know what you get when you cross a fishing tackle with an old smelly sock? I give up. What do you get? Hook, line, and stinker. <laughs> That's funny. What do you get when you cross an elephant with a fish? What? Swimming trunks. Yeah. I got one more for you. What's the difference between a fish and a piano? I don't know. You can't tune a fish. <laughs> hey, I really liked that one. This has been fun. Yeah, you all have to come with me on my next fishing trip.
Did you know that the Smoot Theater was opened in 1926 as a vaudeville house? And not to mention, it had silent film. On opening night, it featured four acts. Scanlon, Denno Brothers, and Scanlon, that sensational singing, dancing novelty. And Souter, the girl with the southern singing personality and McLaughlin and Evans with their comedy sketch on the little side of the street. And Monroe and their giant and their trampoline novelty act called Go Ahead Charlie. In other words, acts like you saw here tonight on this very same stage. So that's it. That's our Simply Vaudeville show. We hope you have been entertained and that you've learned something about those wonderful days of vaudeville. And you know there's really on only one way to end the show, and that's with a big dance finale. Take, Take it, it away, away, everybody! It's simply vaudeville. We made a show called Simply Vaudeville. It's filled with lots of acts like singing. We hope you liked it, even learned some history of this kind of show. 